Welcome back, gamers. It's another episode of Kentucky Esports Weekly. I'm your host, Nathan Stevens. On the docket today, we have some PCS2 news, the multi-year marriage of League of Legends Esports and Spotify, and some good industry news. Let's get it going with quick hitters. PCS2 North American Grand Finals have been announced. PUBG Corporation announced that the PUBG Continental Series 2 North America Grand Final, which starts this week on August 27th at 7 p.m., continues through September 11th, um, is gonna is gonna get going. The tournament will eventually bring the world regions together for a share of an $800,000 prize pot. The North America teams that move forward to compete for the giant bag of moolah include 303 Esports, Any Trolls in Chat, Carnage Gaming, Comets, Dodge, Duel, Fabled, Houston Hardshifts, Illusion, Liberate, Oath, Radiance, Shoot to Kill, Sonics, Team Veritas and Zenith Esports. Zenith, I love that name. Anyway, check out the PCS2 North America Grand Final this week to get your esports kicks. Next, according to esportsinsider.com's Mitch Rames, Riot Games League of Legends Esports has signed a multi year partnership with Spotify that covers the mid season invitational, the all star event, and the world championship. Rams goes on to report that Spotify will create curated playlists, podcasts that are centric to League, and produce a behind-the-scenes documentary. That should be cool. Naz Alataha, head of global esports partnerships at Riot Games, commented on the partnership by saying, Music and storytelling have become an intrinsic part of our sport and game, so we're excited to partner with Spotify to provide our fans with another platform where they can enjoy a new manifestation of League of Legends esports. Powered by our shared commitment to innovation, this partnership with Spotify further unlocks our ability to merge sports, technology, and music to create unforgettable entertainment experiences and content. Pretty cool stuff from Lo for LOL fans out there. Spotify is popular amongst young folks, so this partnership will be golden. And on that note, we have Quick Hit, the Quick Hitters. Let's check out some industry news. Hello, I'm Tyler Ralston. And I'm Haley Sawyers. And this is the week's industry news. Journey to the West is a classical Chinese novel that has inspired a great many fictional stories across all forms of entertainment media, from anime like Dragon Ball or games such as Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Now, a new title is being developed by Game Science Studios, composed of former Tencent employees who are giving their greatest effort to their own adaptation of the story of Wu Kong, the Monkey King. This week, they dropped the reveal trailer with 13 minutes of in-engine gameplay, which looks incredible in both presentation and performance for a pre-alpha state and a world premiere. The gameplay starts with a golden cicada flying through dense woodlands over humanoid animal creatures before the cicada is revealed to be a disguise for the player to sneak around. Navigating the environment, Wukong is presented with several enemies which can be confronted with trickery such as an ability to freeze them or produce several clones of themselves to rush at their opponent. And melee combat with a powerful staff that grows and extends as needed for different attacks. In this demo, two bosses are fought, one being another simian similar to the player character who wields a flame-imbued staff which the player loots upon their defeat, and the other, a terrifyingly large wolf-like beast that thrashes and overpowers the player with hulking attacks and incredible speed. However, Wukong in all his trickery is able to mimic the boss they previously defeated shaping his image and his likeness and using the flaming staff to deal greater damage to the massive wolf. On its defeat, the player character is confronted by what appears to be the true Wukong, garbed in golden armor and a feathered helmet wielding his, his legendary staff that bears the shimmering gold letters of its name. Following this brief moment, the trailer begins to show more of the game's later contents, beautiful landscapes, and unique enemies that all seem to be directly inspired by the events of Journey to the West, including the four heavenly kings and their army of 100,000 soldiers, which the player will apparently challenge. As the situation stands, there is no release date given for Black Myth Wukong, but the developers have stated it will come to PC and mainstream consoles. 
A teaser trailer is out now for the Lord of the Rings Gollum. The game was announced for the Xbox Series X and PS5 earlier this year. In the CG trailer, viewers see Gollum, and by extension Smeagol, stealthily making his way through caves and mountains before a white shot reveals a fiery volcano in the distance. Behind the volcano appears to be the Eye of Sauron. The trailer gives little away about the plot of the game, but representatives from IGN have revealed more information. While many players are probably familiar with Frodo's journey, this game will tell a different side of the story. It will allow players to take on the roles of both Smeagol and Gollum, and decisions made by the players will affect the look, feel, and ultimate outcome of the game. Though Gollum does have the ability to take out some enemies and employ a variety of parkour climbing skills, his real abilities lie in cunning and strategy. According to developer of Diadelic Entertainment, gameplay footage will be revealed next year. The complete game, The Lord of the Rings Gollum, will also launch sometime later next year for next-gen consoles and PC only. A specific date has yet to be revealed. Two weeks ago, we brought up a teaser for a new Suicide Squad game, and we had previously mentioned how the Batman Arkham series has not seen a new entry in quite some time, but rumors were circulating around a possible new title. Well, the DC Fandome event has given us glimpses into not one new game, but two. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, coming from Rocksteady Studios, and Gotham Knights from WB Montreal both got exciting new reveal trailers this past week. Suicide Squad is focusing on the ragtag group of villains being tasked with assassinating Superman and likely the rest of the Justice League, who appear to be under the control of Brainiac or a similar character. Gotham Knights, on the other hand, appears more like the traditional Arkham games, but is set post-mortem of the great Batman, with his former sidekicks Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin, and the Red Hood taking up the mantle of heroes in his absence. Gotham Knights is rumored to feature new two-player co-op, and while the trailer sets it up as a sequel to Batman Arkham Knight, it is being said that it is not a true sequel. While Rocksteady's Suicide Squad is possibly the true continuation of the series, despite the tonal differences. It is likely we will understand more in due time. From indie studio and developer Draw Distance comes Vampire the Masquerade, Shadows of New York. Shadows of New York is a standalone expansion to last year's Vampire the Masquerade, Coteries of New York. In addition to the expansion's launch will be a visual novel. Both last year's release and the new expansion pack are spin-offs of the game Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Bloodlines was a 2004 RPG that explored the idea of modern-day vampires. Shadows of New York continues that modern approach and follows the character of Julia, a La Sombra vampire looking to move up the ranks of a vampire society. The choices players make as Julia will lead to one of two different endings in the game. A true sequel to 2004's Bloodlines is currently in development. That game, called Bloodlines 2, has faced delays but is expected for launch next year. As for Coteries, Draw Design is developing an improvement patch in response to player feedback. Vampire the Masquerade, Shadows of New York, and the accompanying visual novel will launch on September 10th for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Know your history, or you're doomed to repeat it. Quite a foreboding tagline, but for the new Call of Duty Black Ops game titled Cold War, it certainly feels very appropriate. This last week, we finally got a teaser trailer for this next Call of Duty, with its focus being on an interview with a real-life Soviet defector, warning America of the hidden threats it is facing. The trailer highlights the information about the Soviet spy, codenamed Perseus, who has infiltrated America's military intelligence. Another detail true to life. This is accompanied by other documentary footage during this crucial time in American history as the defector continues to warn the public of the threat of Russia and its efforts to destabilize America from the inside, with quotes and warnings in plain white text interrupting the video every few moments before select words turn to red Cyrillic. Finally, the trailer closes on a dark blue screen with the title of the game in white text before it is replaced with a reveal date for August 26th. By the time this episode airs, we will have more info to cover, but an additional detail is the mention of Verdansk in the YouTube trailer's description, the name of the map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Warzone mode. An augmented reality game, that is to say a series of teasers and hints for the community to decrypt using a variety of tactics and tools, led up to this review, and it is likely it will continue afterwards. So if you're up for hunt for details, be checking out their social media pages. And finally, we have some updates on Cyberpunk 2077. 
CD Projekt Red will offer free DLC after Cyberpunk 2077 is launched. The introduction of DLC follows the strategy used by the developer for The Witcher 3, a game which introduced 16 free pieces of DLC after its launch. Though players can also purchase two expansion packs for The Witcher 3, expansion packs for Cyberpunk 2077 have yet to be announced. We also have an update on the game's subtitles. Fans expressed concern after a screenshot of the game on Twitter appeared to reveal tiny subtitles in a light blue color that was hard to distinguish from the background. CD Projekt Red has since assured players that the subtitles can be adjusted by both size and color. The move to make the subtitles flexible and adjustable from the game's launch lines up with the company's public mission to improve diversity and inclusion for their players. Cyberpunk 2077 will launch on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on November 19th. However, the game will also eventually be released on PS5 and Xbox Series X. For players who already own the game, an upgrade will be given at no charge. And that's it for the industry news this week. Now back to Nathan. And that was industry news. Thank you very much, Haley and Tyler. Now we got Alex Cutadine joining us once again for our wrap at the end of the show. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So what you got for us on campus? What's happening? Yeah, so this week we've got all of our events are virtual. We've got, uh, we want to remind you about Push to Talk every Thursday. That's our video game discussion panel with Nick Hughes, Morgan Mulberry, uh, Elias Conwell, and the Jew, Jude Hagerman. And uh, they talk about uh, kind of hot button issues, hot topics in the video game industry each week, Thursday at 6 p.m. on Twitch. Then on Monday, August 31st, we have Linguists Play Games with Andrew Bird and Jennifer Kramer. So they're going to play. I'm not sure what they're playing this week, but they're going to play games. They're going to try to do this each week and then give you commentary from the perspective of a linguist. <laughs> and, uh, of course, they're with the linguistics department. And we're hoping to do more content like that in the future. Thursday, September 3rd, according to the calendar. Uh, we have Ryan James from Naughty Dog, who's going to be talking about building a narrative in games and writing in video games and that should be uh that will be part of our esports speaker series that happens each month again that's thursday september 3rd cool that's very cool um i'm kind of anxious to see how the linguist the linguistics folks do in gaming i might tune in for that one uh they are a wild bunch that bunch uh, yeah if you want to check out their their last recording we uh we have a highlight of them on twitch they streamed um, Andrew Bird helped develop the game Far Cry, Far Cry Primal. He uh, helped develop the uh, language, the language that cr they created for that game. And uh, so he was part of that development team. And um, that uh, he goes through Far Cry Primal, plays for a couple hours. Um, so check our Twitch channel for that. Um, that was a, a great stream and they had a lot of fun. Oh, I bet that was. I bet that was very cool. Well, excellent. Well, that's all I've got. That's all I hope. Is that all you got? That's all I've got. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll. Uh, well, we'll we'll end the show there. We'll we'll be back next week. We'll we'll probably have some more news and uh, on hopefully the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X. If somebody would move and like reveal their cards, that would be great for all the consumers out there. Um, and we'll probably chat it up about Avengers uh, somewhere along the way. But until then, everybody stay safe. Remember to wear your masks, and uh, we'll see you next week. See ya.